they, they got off to a much better start. I mean, I think we made a, a, a case in point how important it was to get off to a better start. You know, obviously the great drive to start. And then we made, you know, too many mistakes uh, on the ensuing uh, UCLA drive, uh, which were maddening. Um, but all of their points in the, in the first half were, were just mistakes that, that are all correctable mistakes. And we corrected them in the second half and played, you know, really well in the second half, controlled the second half. I think we had two drives that were 90-plus drives. I think that's um, – hadn't done that here in, you know, over 20 years. So over 20 years. Who's been here for the – over 20 years? Yeah, you guys didn't – you guys don't – you raise your hand, but you don't know. I'm giving you the information for the first time because you guys act like you've been here for 20 years. Todd Collins told you that. No, I knew it. I knew it. Anyway, uh, those two drives obviously, you know, were, were key in, in terms of, you know, just setting the tone for the game. We controlled the line of scrimmage and, you know, ran the football through it, had some key third down conversions. And then defensively, you know, we got off the field. We had the, the, the key uh, sack um, and, and, and drove them out of field goal range and, and played complimentary football. So, wish we were cleaner in the first half. Um, you know, the mistakes are, are maddening. Uh, we got to clean them up. We're going to continue to work. No, those are the guys we got. There's nobody getting traded. We're, we're not, you know, those are the guys we're going to work with, and we're going to just keep coaching them. Um, and, and we're going to keep working with them, and they're going to turn the corner in terms of uh, listening and, and, and trusting, and, and we're going to keep working on how to put them in a better position as coaches and get ready for South Alabama. But it was a good win, and um, pleased with the group in terms of the way they started. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Uh, Coach, how's Harold, how's Harold Perkins? He's injured. We don't know. I mean, we'll do all the diagnostic testing tonight and tomorrow, and we'll have a better answer for you when we when we do our presser on Monday. And with Mason Taylor, he's been, I, I guess, a very consistent security blanket for you guys offensively. How important is it to have a guy like him? Yeah, nobody talked about him coming into the season. I thought he was unheralded. Uh, you guys didn't talk about him. The national media didn't talk about him. Now you guys start talking about him because he's the all-time leading receiver in LSU history. And now all of a sudden you want to talk about Mason Taylor. Where were you guys talking about him earlier in the season? You were talking about everybody else but Mason Taylor. So now he's the leading receiver you want to talk about. I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> Coach, um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the first half, you know, you went into the locker room at 17-17, and the second half your defense clamped down and shut them out in the second half. What changes did your defense make? They didn't make any changes. They, they, they executed the defenses that were called. And execution is attention to detail, doing your job, D-Y-J, do your job, that's an acronym, D-Y-J, and, and they just, we, we need to do our job, and they did it in the second half, and if we just continue to do our job on defense in particular, now offensively we had some key drops, right, I mean, we got to catch the football, and, and, and we got to make, you know, the timely calls offensively. We got to coach it. Uh, but doing our job on defense was the biggest difference in, from, from the first half to the second half. That's right here. Uh, you talk about Savion Jones and, and Braden Swenson. I know the front seven played well, you know, throughout the game. But did one of those guys give you and how has Coach Peoples just really unlocked their pass rush moves? Well, I think that they, a lot of credit should go to Coach Peoples and his ability to teach the technique necessary for two different kinds of players. Uh, Swinson's 238, 240 pounds if he eats and takes all the supplements like he's supposed to each week, which sometimes doesn't happen. But we stay on to make sure he does that. Uh, he'll be in here in a little bit and he can call on that to ask him about him taking his supplements and making sure that he eats all the time. But my point being is that's a guy who's a lot lighter. And then you have a 275 pound defensive end. They are clearly different players. And he's been able to take two different players with different skill sets and give them the ability to, to, to pass rush using different techniques. I think he's done a terrific job. And both those guys have too, let's face it. You know, it takes two to tango. Both those guys have really worked their craft and have been extremely coachable. 
and it, we're starting to see those efforts come to fruition. Coach, apparently there were a number of fans who needed medical attention, and that side of the stadium is tough for those fans with the sun and everything. Do you have any thoughts on day games in September uh, here in the South? You know, we're – look, I mean, <laughs> my comments would be, you know, uh, the TV schedule is something that I have no control over. I'm sure our administration – uh, gets a chance to weigh in. Um, we would we would prefer you know uh, later games, um, but you know we're beholden to to what uh, you know the national audience is. Um, so I mean that that's the best I can do. I'm, I feel bad. I, I hope everybody is okay. Um, I did see visually that there weren't many people in the stands over there uh, because the sun is obviously pounding on them. Um, so, you know, I don't know what the plans are. I know Kelly was, Kelly Zinn is here. She, she probably can give you a little bit more information on the retractable roof that we're talking about. Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, she can field questions about that later. No, I'm kidding. There's no retractable roof. But yours is a serious matter, and I get it. Um, but I, I really don't have much say on that in terms of the games. Brian, you talked about the progress from one half to the second. Are you comfortable with the progress four games into this season that your team has made? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we've played three out of four teams that that are power four, you know, power four, power five, you know, conferences. However, you want to put it. I, I don't want to disrespect any of the conferences, but you know, it, it's been a process for us, you know, in, in, in terms of. You know, I think we found our stride in, in, in terms of what we want to do offensively. I think we saw that today. Um, we did some really good things defensively. The difference is we're pressuring, we're getting turnovers, we're doing some really good things defensively, and then it's just maddening some of the silly mistakes that we're making on defense that just have to go away as we get, you know, we're going to get a really good South Alabama team in there. You know, Major Applewhite's originally from this area. He's going to have that football team raring to go. And, you know, we saw how hard Nickel State played. South Alabama has got a lot of talent. they got some young players that are going to be really good. We got to be ready for that football team, and then we get into you know the meat of the schedule. So, you know we've made some improvements, but we got a ways to go. Um, so, continuing to develop our football team so we do the little things the right way. There's enough talent out here to contend for an SEC championship. We got to clean up the little mistakes. I already talked about you know, finding something offensively. It seems like a lot of that's scary, uh, especially on those two really long drives. Did he show you anything else, or there was really just that the rest of the people offensively moving forward, kind of putting the ball in his hands? Well, it certainly is. The quarterback is this, you know, the straw that, that that stirs every drink in college football in terms of, you know, anybody that you're talking about that is an outstanding football program. You're going to start talking about the quarterback first. You're not talking about him last. So Garrett Nussmeyer is that guy for us. But he has a supporting cast. I think he has a really good offensive line. I think they keep him clean. I think they keep him protected. I think they allow him to do his job. I mean, you know, he, he, he certainly has areas to grow. I think we've got to get better in the run game recognition. I, I think that our receivers are showing some signs. Um, you know, Chris, Chris was, uh, you know, game day, a game time decision that we didn't, you know, play him because we didn't see that he added enough uh, to what we wanted to do. We, we thought that, um, you know, we could get it from other areas. Um, and, and so, you know, there's another guy that we expect back maybe next week, full go, where we can get another vertical threat, those weapons. And then, again, you, you're seeing, you know, the backs all running better and, and Caden Durham obviously catching the ball out of the backfield and with his speed, breaking away and, and, and making a big play. So he's got the weapons necessary, but he is the guy that makes it happen. Absolutely. Aaron Anderson got involved early yeah. in this game. Uh, just your thoughts on his performance today. He's been consistent for us. A consistent ball catcher, a guy that's been uh, one that I think has made steady improvement. He had a bad you know, lock up with his back on Wednesday where he couldn't practice at all. And uh, really proud of the way he fought through it, practiced a little bit on Thursday, uh, and, and then just did all the right things to get himself in the right mindset to play here on Saturday. So really proud of Aaron's development, both on and off the field, where he can come in and 
overcome, you know, a back that, that kind of locked up on them and, and come up and, and make an impact on Saturday. Got time for a couple more. Brian, if Harold isn't able to go next week or potentially even longer, uh -huh. how do you guys help? the guys around him, not allow that to be something that really factors into how they play, obviously with him being a big piece, a leader on that side of the ball, how do you not allow that to get them back? Yeah, we've got great leaders with Greg Penn. Um, you know, we hope he's okay, but, you know, we've got Greg Penn. We've got, you know, Whit Weeks. West will be back next week, which he's played really good football for us. So we can still stay in our Buffalo package. We can go back into our dime package drop a major down. So we've got a lot of options there. You know, we hope he's okay. We hope he's back for us. Um, but but we'll be able to move into other packages that, that resemble what we've been doing. Last one in the back. Yeah, you guys have improved your run game, game a lot since the beginning of the season. Can well, you thank you. Me? I think you're the only one that, that <laughs> realizes that, other than the 800 million people that, that want us to run it better, but thank you. Can you just talk to me a little bit about what's changed for you guys in that aspect? I, I just think opportunity, you know, and I think our backs are seeing it better. Part of, part of the running game is the comfortability of those backs to really see holes and make some people miss. And, and again, that's not a veteran group, you know, other than Josh, um, those are young players that are, you know, gradually coming into their own. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, it was difficult to run today. I don't know if you guys watched the game at all. You, if you did, um, you saw backers up all day, you know, crowding the line of scrimmage, making it very difficult, but they gave us the ability to throw the ball. I don't know, what did we throw for, 350? You know, when you're throwing for 350, you know, plus, it means the box is loaded and it's hard to run it. But we still found a way when it was time to run the ball, especially down by the goal line, we exerted our will and that was what we did. And thanks again for the running question. We don't get many of those around here, which is crazy, but thank you.